Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's do the review of this POCO X2. And I have been actually using this smartphone for the last 7 days with my primary son, that is Airtel. And I'll uh, share my experience, what I like about this and what is the things that I do not like. And as you can see, we are outdoors, I was also board shooting indoors. So I've taken a lot of samples also, I'll talk about that. And uh, I'll talk what I feel about this POCO X2, uh, because it was launched at about 16,000. And I would say camera is a big uh, plus point on this one. But before we jump into the review, uh, let's uh, talk about the specs. This POCO X2 is having a 6.67 inch IPS LCD screen. It's a 120 hertz screen. It's powered by the Snapdragon 730G SoC. It comes in 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM. It actually has a quad camera setup with the 64 megapixel main sensor, a 20 megapixel front facing camera. And as you can see, other specs are on the screen for your reference. So guys, let's talk about the pros first, then we'll talk about the cons. And the first thing uh, that I liked about this one is that if you recall the POCO F1, there I never liked the build quality. But here, as you can see, the build quality is really good on this one. The back is also glass. It's actually Gorilla glass and it feels very nice in the hand. It feels substantial. It doesn't feel like cheap or something. So definitely in terms of build quality, uh, they have done actually a very good uh, job. No issues. Uh, it's slightly on the heavier side, <laughs> I'll talk about that later, but uh, build quality definitely feels actually premium. Now, if we talk about the fingerprint scanner, it's here within the power on off button and I would say it works very well, but again, it'll take you a day or two to get used to it. But as you can see, it works very well without any issues. Now, uh, let's also talk about the big elephant in the room that is the type of screen that is used on this one that's a 6.67 inch IPS LCD screen and it's a 120 hertz screen that what they have uh, uh, used I'll talk about the screen later on I shot some footage I'll show you that but the thing is that uh, everybody is now hyping that 120 hertz so what is this within the UI a normal uh, what do you say LCD screen or AMOLED screen is generally 60 hertz it can refresh about 60 times this has an option of refreshing up to 120 I think so I just set it to uh, 60 but as you can see you can set it to 120 I just played around with uh, so what happens is within the UI here the UI elements are refreshing at about 120 frames per second but again do note that every app also needs to support this for example um, it was fine in the web browser and stuff it is fine as you can see the scrolling is very smooth uh, the camera might not be able to capture it uh, but again I noticed that on Twitter it was a little bit choppy so again the apps also need to support it and I would say this 90 or 120 Hertz make a big difference especially for gamers if your games also support that refresh so I'm sort of neutral about it in day-to-day -day usage I would say I don't notice that much of a uh, what do you say difference in this one uh, but yeah you have that option of setting it to 60 or 120 hertz but it's a IPS LCD screen and the screen quality is good here is a footage uh, to give you an idea and there's a lot of talk about the display on this one this has native 120 hertz but again guys uh, it's only in the UI and stuff where you'll see and some of the optimized app for example in Twitter also I don't see it I see that jerk but in uh, what do you say uh, browsers it is very smooth because it does support that so in UI yes it, it can go up to 120 hertz and stuff but the thing is that this is an IPS grade screen and the quality of the screen is good as you can see I'm outdoors I just want to tell how is the screen in direct sunlight so I'm just gonna move here here is the direct sunlight and as you can see we are able to see it my camera is having difficulty capturing it but I'm able to see the screen easily even in direct sunlight now I have this realme X and uh, this has an AMOLED screen both are on auto and uh, yes as you can see uh, both are sort of visible but uh, slight brightness edge I would give uh, to the POCO but if you just move to slightly normal shadowed areas both are sort of visible uh, so yes it doesn't have an AMOLED screen but the quality of panel that they have put is good the color reproduction is good and yes we do have that 120 Hertz uh, screen stuff I would say it's just for hardcore gamers but the reality is that even the most popular games are still at 60 Hertz so again I'm sort of neutral about that 60 or 120 Hertz but the IPS panel what they have given on this one is a good one 
Now let's talk about the performance. Under the hood, this is having the Snapdragon 730G chipset. And some of you were annoyed that Poco didn't go with the flagship like the Poco F1. Guys, do note that this is the X2, not the F series. And the 730 handles everything fine. It's still a very good processor. It handles everything you throw on it. As I've told you, the UI, I did not notice any lagginess or anything when I was using this device. And it handles everything. And the good thing is that even the base variant actually comes with uh, 6 GB of RAM and also in terms of RAM management, it is doing actually a good job. So you don't have to worry. But again, as it's MIUI guys, you know MIUI is sort of aggressive in terms of RAM management. So what I've noticed is that if you don't use a particular app for a couple of hours, it will try to like uh, kill it. So that is something you have to note. And uh, you can go in the settings and uh, enable it not to do it. For example, I enabled it for true caller. But general, I would say the operations, the RAM management was fine. I did not have a problem. Problem. And because of the 730G, it handles everything you throw on it fine. I'll talk about gaming also. Uh, I played Call of Duty quite a bit and even PUBG. So in that area is also it is good. And general UI, you don't have an issue. It's typical me UI that, that you're getting. And I like the fact that this one has the IR blaster. Uh, so you can control televisions and uh, ACs with this one. Now, if we talk about uh, the battery uh, on this one, it has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and it uh, also comes with a 27 watt uh, fast charger supplied and charges fairly quickly with that. I did not time it guys to be exact, so can't give you the figures, but it charges pretty quickly. And I also tried charging it with a regular 18 watt Qualcomm charger and it did uh, charge it quickly, I would say, uh, but not as quickly as uh, a 27 watt. Uh, but again, it does support that Qualcomm uh, 18 watt quick charging also, I tested that. So that way it's nice. But if you talk about the battery life, uh, I'm going to show you some of the stats here. As you can see, the battery life is actually really, really good on this one. Easily I can give you about two, two and a half days worth of battery life. And uh, the standby time is really good. The idle drain that I was having was very, very low on this one. So in terms of battery life, I would say even if you're sort of a uh, PDM to a heavy user, it should give you about one to one and a half days easily. And if you're sort of a casual user using it with a single SIM, I would say uh, you can go above two and a half days. As you go and see, uh, one day I got about three days uh, of uh, charge. It was Sunday was there, so no, not, a, not a heavy day in the middle. But as you can see, the battery life that you can get is very good. Now talking about the cellular network reception uh, and the earpiece, that was also very good on this one. I did not have a problem in terms of earpiece because if you recall some of the earlier Redmi phones, I had issues with the earpiece, uh, but here the earpiece is very clear and even the microphone was good. Other parties never complain me that the call quality was bad or something and and um, right now i'm on airtel and if you notice this closely uh, underneath this wi-fi you have a call icon that means uh voice over wi-fi is enabled so vo wi-fi that is a new thing is enabled on this handset and that's why even a sitting in this room where the signal is very low i can take calls and I th that works brilliantly so in terms of network reception i did not have a problem with this device i also did some gaming and here is the footage now if we talk about gaming as you can see i'm playing call of duty with this one and i played this game quite a bit but again this game is also not that 90 or 120 fps regular uh, what do you say uh, 60 fps but as you can see it handles it well i even played pubg and it was fine uh, but the thing is uh, i got killed the thing is that if you notice the speaker is over here so while i was playing this game you try to hold it tightly like this and as you can see now you can't hardly hear me you completely block it so i have to be cautious that i have to keep my hand a little bit away and uh, so that is the con that I have the placement of the speaker while you're gaming. If you're not careful, you can completely block it. As you can see, I tend, I tend uh, to block it. So that's the only thing, but in general gaming, the Snapdragon uh, 730 SoC is fine. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just that the speaker, as you can see, you hold it like this, you completely actually block it. But gaming uh, performance was good and it also claims to have liquid cooling over here at the back and after about two uh, games it does tend to get a little bit warm but that's how it, it's designed it's designed to dissipate the heat so in gaming i would say good experience you will have uh, but speaker placement that is something you have to note
Now let's also talk about the camera, which I feel is the crumb card for this uh, device. And if you notice at the back, we are actually having a quad camera setup. And the main camera is actually a 64 megapixel uh, sensor from Sony. This is the new IMX686. And I was very doubtful because this is the first time they say the sensor is being used in India. But the image processing what Xiaomi has done on this one is very good. And so I'll show you a lot of sample shots. The results that I got were very good. Then we have an 8 megapixel wide angle lens i wished it was 12 but yeah that's what we are getting and next we have a 2 megapixel for depth and 2 megapixel for macro i'll show you also show you some macro shots but here are some of the samples that i've taken with this uh, smartphone so these were some of the outdoor samples that I took. This is regular, this is that 2x zoom, and this was that wide angle. These were taken completely artificial low lighting conditions, and this was with the night mode. And I feel in artificial low lighting conditions, as you can see with these samples, it does actually very good. This is regular shot, and here I use the 2x zoom, and here I use the wide angle. Again, to give you an idea, regular shot, this was that wide angle lens, and again, this is regular shot. Here I use the 2x zoom. And finally here, I use the wide angle lens. Uh, this is regular and this is that macro option that I used. One more example, this is regular. And here, see the detail with the macro. Again, regular shot. And this was with the macro. Again, regular. And again, this is that close up macro. Now moving the human subjects also, as you can see, did a very good job. Uh, the skin tones are produced well, but when you use the portrait mode, uh, as you can see, this was blown out. So you have to be careful. In regular shots, it's okay, but with the portrait mode, as you can see, you have to be careful if there's bright light behind. This was with the wide angle lens. And uh, these were taken with the front facing camera. And as you can see, the front facing camera performance was also very good, I would say. Even when you use the portrait bokeh mode, uh, it is actually doing a pretty good job shooting this video with the poco x2 in the regular mode and as you can see i'm just walking and uh, even though i'm walking handheld it looks like stabilization is on by default and uh, we'll just uh, switch to the wide angle mode and see now shooting the video and as you can see now this is in the wide angle mode so you can shoot videos in wide angle mode with this one Okay, those were the good things about this device. Now let's talk about the cons. And the first thing that I do not like is this pill-shaped notch. Why do they have this? I think so, this was simply unnecessary. They could have gone with a single camera that 20 megapixel would have made sense because with software you can get that depth effect and even Xiaomi's own Redmi lineup of phones just having a single front facing camera do that so I feel this was unnecessary move could have been avoided next if we talk is uh, I don't like the fact that we don't have a dedicated micro SD card slot on this one so if you go with the base uh, storage variant that comes with just 64 GB of storage it is a limiting thing because I know many people uh, here in India actually use both the sim so that's a uh, miss, missing feature I would say hence I would not suggest the base variant that's for 16 I would suggest the higher end variant uh, that's for 17 if I recall that comes with 6 GB of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage now another thing that I do not like about this device is again it's a big device it's a 6.67 inch screen and many of you were asking yes it's definitely a big device also and now even after about uh, a week or so Though the weight balance is fine, but it does still feel a little bit on the heavier side. If I recall, it weighs about 208 grams. So that is also something you have to get used to it. And uh, back also they gave glass, so that doesn't help. Glass adds to the weight. So definitely slightly on the heavier side. And yes, many of you have asked me, it's a two-handed device because as you can see, you simply can't reach to the top like this. And while typing also, you have to use two hands. So it is definitely a two-handed device that you are getting another thing is that um, though this does not have an amulet screen but they have omitted a physical led notification light on this one so that is also something that i do not uh, like on this uh, smartphone and uh, lastly i would say uh, again it's me ui i haven't seen any ads but you do have some unnecessary notification for example uh, just before shooting the video we got this notification you can disable it yes uh, by this but you will get some unnecessary notifications there was one more that was coming quite a bit like me video or something uh, recommending me unnecessary videos i disabled it so there are some apps that will recommend you what do you say uh, you'll get notifications like this but you can disable it but you do get that uh, from time to time so what do i feel about this poco x2 and as you can see i don't have the poco x2 with me because i'm shooting this conclusion part with the poco x2 to give you an idea how the uh, phone performs and how is the audio pickup and stuff and overall as you saw with the pros and cons yes it's not a perfect device like any smartphone 
Uh, I don't like that pill shaped notch. I don't know why they did that. They could have gone with a single camera, I would say. And yes, uh, they didn't uh, go with the AMOLED screen. Instead of that, uh, they went with the LCD screen with that 120 hertz display. I won't debate if it is useful or not. I would say 120 hertz, yes, in the UI, slightly you will notice it, but day to day, uh, what do you say, usage, you won't notice it. And also in games, yes, where it is sort of useful. The games need to support that. And just the popular games like PUBG, even Call of Duty are still stuck at 60 hertz. Uh, so I won't debate uh, about the decision between AMOLED or IPS, it's better or not. You talk, uh, you let me know. But the IPS quality, screen, the screen quality, what they're putting in terms of colors, outdoor visibility is actually a cop screen. Now, if we talk about what I really liked about this smartphone is, first thing is the build quality is a lot better than the Poco F1. There it was flimsy here, that's not the case, the build quality is but it looks stylish also I would say, at least in this blue color it looks nice. And uh, what I really liked about this smartphone is the camera. The camera is amazing on this one. The 64 megapixel camera what they have, uh, Xiaomi did an amazing job of image processing on it because the results that we got as you saw earlier were very very good with this one. Uh, so the camera is the trump card for me and also the battery life was very very good easily about one and a half to two days uh, most of you should get and if you're sort of a very casual user almost about two and a half days uh, so for me overall package is really good if you're okay with me UI, underneath it runs with me UI. as of now i haven't seen any ads in the last seven days so as of now it's ad free but i don't know in the future what uh, Xiaomi would do but generally with the Poco they don't put ads I hope it stays that way so I would say if you are okay with the MIUI and you are looking for a smartphone under 20,000 rupees this is uh, one heck of a smartphone considering the camera performance on this one the camera performance is amazing I would say much better than even some of the smartphones that cost above 20,000 uh, so that's the big thing and also the battery life is good. So if you are okay with MIUI, you can certainly have a look at this one. But I would suggest not to go with the base variant because that comes with just 64 GB of internal storage. Go with the next variant that comes with 6 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage. That would be the ideal thing. Anyways guys, that's it for my review of this POCO X2. What do you feel about this POCO X2? Do let me know in the comment section below. And if you guys are still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care guys.